There are three skills that you need as a software developer to be successful that you can't learn at school. And in this video, I'm gonna share about each one. They kind of build upon one another. So let's just, you know, make our way through it. This video is for those that are either early in their software development stages, they're learning in school, or they're about to enter the workforce. So if you're a veteran, this might not be for you, but you know, it could always be helpful for you. So just watch. Let's get into point one. And point one is coding. I know I said you can't learn this at school and you can learn coding at school. Like you go to college or to, you know, a smaller school, like a trade school or an online school, a dev camp, boot camp, and you learn programming. And some of that's really great in school. I learned Java, I learned some Python, uh, some C, C++, a bunch of different things to learn the concepts of programming, data structures, algorithms, logic, and practically how to, you know, open up a code editor, edit, run code, build, test, stuff like that. I didn't learn hardly any web development in college, but I know there are classes now that do that, and there, there are dev schools that specifically teach web development. So you can learn coding in school. So what do I mean? I mean that whenever you're joining a software company, you have this idea of what coding is going to be based on the classes or the projects that you have done. And it's sort of like that. Like you're still writing functions, you're still building stuff, you're still testing your functions, building components if you're a front-end developer, React developer, you're still building those components like you would if you're not working for anyone. But when you're doing your own school project, you can literally do whatever you want. Like you can code, you can name variables, random variables. Like a lot of times teachers don't check your code. They just make sure that your test the test case is passed. And so, I mean, that's great because that's really important. But whenever you are writing code for a company and you have other people around you, you're more so writing for those people. Like, of course your code has to work. It has to meet the standards. It has to meet what your spec is. But if other engineers can't read your code, then your code is pretty much crap. And maybe that's something you learn while partnering up with other people in your projects at school. But to the extent of like everything needs to be like you're writing in a dictionary or you're writing for the history books. It has to be great. Now, I know some of y'all who work for startups, it's not necessarily like this or you're siloed off on a project. You can kind of do what you want, but if you leave that job and someone can't read your code, they're gonna be really pissed and they're gonna spend $100,000 to rewrite the code and so on. So even if you know coding extremely well, you have all your data structures, all your algorithms in line, ducks in a row, which is something that I don't, but I have so far been successful in my career. And the coding that I do is very basic. It's very simple. It works, tested well, and customers can use it without it bugging out. And of course I write bugs sometimes, we all do. But my point is that you don't have to have all your ducks in a row with data structures in order to be a software developer. And, and this is especially true when you're working with teammates, which is our next point. And just for some context, I'm Chris. I'm currently a software engineer at a consulting company, and I've been doing software developing professionally for 10 years, which is wild to think about. I went to university here in Texas, University of Texas, hook them horns. <laughs> I wasn't that great at school, but I graduated with a computer science degree. And during my four years in college, I learned a lot through classes, but I learned the most when I joined a very early startup in college. I helped start one and then did that startup for the next few years. And then eventually we closed down the doors and I went to a bigger startup that got acquired by a really, really big company. And now I'm at a consulting company. And that might be a little bit too technical for some of y'all here. The point is that I've worked for both really small companies as well as very, 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 very big companies, very corporate and working on different kinds of projects, all dealing with a bunch of data, learning how to navigate the teamwork, learning to navigate politics, learning to program, all these things that school really doesn't teach you. So without further ado, teamwork is our next point. And this is with your fellow engineers on your direct small team but this is also with those that's like your manager, your program manager, even the tech lead above your manager, and you know, so on and so forth as the you know, ladder built. Um, it's also with designers and cross team or engineers on other teams. There's a lot of people that you work with when you're a software developer. It's not just you and a project, 
you're turning it into your teacher. Unless, you know, sometimes that is the case. But most of the time you're building a project with other teammates so you can sell that software to a client or it's software that clients are always using and you are building a feature for them and you can make money, right? So your whole job is to make money. Um, so you have to keep that in mind. So you, as a software developer, are usually, all right, my back's kind of hurting. <laughs> you, as a software developer, are usually on the bottom of the totem pole, right? Unless you're like a principal engineer or you're a senior software, but like you're going into the work first, you're on the bottom, which means that they are using your skill to build out the product, but you need to understand how to work with your manager, how to work with designers, how to implement what designers give you, what your manager gives you to work on, the tasks that they assign to you, and build it from there. Oh, in school, your professor or, you know, the professor assistant gives you a project, right? And they give you this project. I'm trying to think of one I had in school. One of ours in school was to develop a small operating system and it was a terrible project. <laughs> we were building this project over the course of a semester. So say for instance, for one week, the project was to build the virtual memory of it. And there was a boilerplate code, and then you filled out these different functions to make the virtual memory work. And there was comments on like what each function should do basically. Um, so it was very like, I'm gonna hand feed you how to get this answer. And here's the test cases that it should work for. Now, when you're a developer, you get a task from someone, they write out the task and they put like what it should do. So you're building this component with a button, with a text area, and it should do this. And it should be this color, it should be this pixels, it should be this wide, this high, this background color should be placed here, it should function like this. And your job is to implement it. Make sure it works, make sure it works good. But a lot of times, not everything is in those tickets. Like it's a hard job to put everything in the tickets. So you see a ticket, you start working on it and you're like, oh wait, this functions differently than this part over here. And so now I need to reach out to the designers or your program manager or your manager or all of them at the same time and ask what you should do. So you need to communicate with all these different teammates, coordinate um, what's going on. And sometimes they don't know the answer because they're like, oh, I never thought about that. Like a lot of times they don't think about error states. And so you're like, oh, this needs an error state because our API fails too many times. <laughs> it's a bad user experience. When something fails, the whole app crashes. And so you reach out and you're like, what should we do about this? And they're like, hmm, let me think about it. What do you think? And so you, you know, give your opinion, you talk about them. And then you're like, oh, let me reach out to this other guy. I know implemented it on this side of the application and see if we can use that. And so you're using code from there. You're talking to your designer and you're just coordinating, right? And I know this is kind of like a lot of like overhead. Um, but if you don't hear anything, hear this. You've got to communicate with your teammates. You have to be clear on what you need to code and you need to understand how you need to code it within your code base. So it's not just the coding that's important, but it's the teamwork of how to code and what you're building. Sorry, I'm moving around here. I don't really know where to go. And along with that teamwork, you also have things like sprint planning and you have one-on-one -on -one meetings with your manager and you have corporate meetings. And these are all different things that involve teamwork, but they also involve something called politics. And politics is our next point. And with politics, I'm not talking about Republican or Democrat. Well, I guess I am a little bit. We'll get to that in a second. But politics just means how to maneuver through your company and to live in it and navigate the different relationships and the different power, if you will, at play. So as a newbie engineer, like I said, you're on the bottom of the totem pole and you have your manager. And your manager has a manager. And that manager has a manager. And that really depends on how big your company is. So you're gonna have to deal with politics to a certain extent. So like if you have a manager, you have one-on-ones. An example of politics is this. Managers like, what do you wanna grow in for the next year? And I personally am like, I'm just trying to get my work done. I am, I just started on this job, so I just wanna do a good job. And they're like, okay, so if we set goals for the next year, what are they going to be? And I just want to tell him, uh, I really don't care about goals. I'm just trying to work. <laughs> but part of politics is playing the game of the company, which is like, you need to understand how people perceive you. 
and what you're giving off. And so if you come into a company and you're like, I don't care about your goals, your systems, your company, they're gonna be like, you're just a terrible engineer because you don't know how to like live in this company. So we're gonna fire you. And so you gotta put up something. Oh, okay, how about I will set a couple goals and I'll make these my goals. And it is actually in line with my goals, but I'm still kind of playing the politics game so I can live in the system. And this isn't necessarily a cop out, it kind of is, but it's also important for you to work with the company in your career. Like companies need to make money they need to have good people with them. And so if you're not cooperative, if you're not willing to learn to grow, then honestly, you're just a bad employee. Like go start your own company or like find somewhere that can let you do whatever you want, which is gonna be nowhere. So that's part of politics. That got a little bit serious. <laughs> the other part of it is more of the relationship aspect that I was kind of explaining, like you're talking to designers, program managers, managers, uh, people outside of your direct direct team and you just need to you know put on a good face like be kind give more than you take from people like make sure you have a good reputation like you don't always want to be like nagging people you don't always want to be breaking stuff and if someone like reaches out to you help them like be willing to help be willing to be friendly and this is just a good way to you know get good rapport in your company. It's as simple as that. Like be nice, be friendly, be open, make connections. That's it. And the other part of this is the politics, which is the, you know, the, uh, the left and the right. And companies these days are very political. I've, like I said, I work for corporate companies, the company I work for now. Everyone likes to be political to a certain extent. One of the reasons I left my previous company was because it was too political in the, uh, you know, the world, the world area, not necessarily how to communicate with your team and stuff. And that's just something to be aware of. If you are conservative, you're going to be the minority at your company more than likely, especially if it's a big company and especially if it's based in California. So there's that. And I'm not saying that everyone has to be left or right, but I'm just saying that politics have been brought more into software companies and they are more of the forefront. Like you're going to see the culture and your company be intertwined. Like you're gonna see pronouns everywhere. You're gonna see events for certain things on your Slack and you just something to be aware of. You never thought that everything had to do with politics, but it kind of does now in these days, which is annoying, but that's just something to think about when you're applying for places. You're talking to people while you're hiring and while you're getting integrated into the company. So those are the three things, coding, teamwork, politics and i know these three might not seem crazy and it might be hard to wrap your head around it because you really don't understand until you're like within the culture and learning like how things how things work so this is just hopefully to help you slide in a little bit easier get integrated a little bit better and so i wish you the best of luck thank y'all for watching subscribe if you like more entrepreneur finance self-help stuff and go check out this next video that I think you'll really like. Alrighty, see you later.